Okay, so uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be, be back in Sydney. Um, it's been a few months, a few months here. <laughs> so, uh, and, and a little bit like Stacey, and what I'm probably going to say is a little bit tangential to some of the uh, main themes of the conference. Um, it's still a uh, very good representation theory. Um, it's it's a mix of sort of some some old stuff and some some new stuff. Uh, in thinking about um, being look uh, going back to some of the stuff that I did a while ago, um, and and uh, making it better. <laughs> I I can I can tell that I was a uh, a little less mature about uh, how the great groups and stuck in back back in the day. <laughs> So, so where do I want to start? Um, and this is going to be uh, hopefully uh, the most gentle introduction, um, rather than so that so everyone can, can uh, come along and, and understand what's going on. So we're going to start with a uh, field F, which is a local field. And so the the definition of like a local field is something. Um, um, it, it's like a, uh, there's a few different uh, characterizations, a locally compact, uh, non discrete topological field. Um, it's great. Uh, it's, it's equivalent to saying it's a completion of a global field at a place, but you can also just classify them and sort of just write down what they all are. So uh, this means that it's a finite extension. Of PA numbers, or it's um, wrong series over over F two with with a with a TA topology point. Um, you don't need to say final extensions here because every uh, every final extension of that field is actually isomorphic to another F two product in the wrong series. It, it's a bit of Exercise that we get lost, uh, and we want to we want to look at um we want to look at, at things like uh, if I take um say G a, a reductive algebraic group over F, and you want to want to study the, the representation theory. Of um, the group of endpoints. Uh, and so this is a, a uh, locally compact fully disconnected topological group. Or we want to um, study representation of groups um, G, which fit in the following short, short exact sequence one to mid N to G to G of F. R one and I want this um, extension to be a central extension. So to be a central extension means that the uh, I'll tell you what this is. So the, the, the image of new n lies inside the uh, center of the group G, and here um. Mu n is just a, a finite sequence group. Of order n, and it's sort of, I'm writing mu n because I often I want to actually think about it as the roots of unity, uh, but I'm not actually thinking about it as the roots, you need to do a sort of plus things about things in uh, that sort of language. So it's actually extension that the um, Something which you can classify by some cohomology group of uh, 
technical analogy of this is the to do this, but I don't need to talk about that today. Um, I might mention maybe a couple of reasons as to uh, where this sort of, uh, like, I, I guess um, these piano groups are sort of things that have been, been around for a while. Um, you, maybe you, you decide that the groups are too hard, and so you start piano groups instead. Mm -hmm. And you find that they're hard as well. Um, so they, but a lot, a lot, a lot of the motivation uh, for, for studying some of these things does actually come from, from number theory. Uh, you you might look classically at some of the forms or something, and then you uh, idealize the picture, and then at every every place you you have some representation of the corresponding PA group or the or the real group. And so for the motivation for for the colors might might come in from from things like uh, numerous. Uh, so it's a sort of classical mathematics that, that might motivate some of this, this thinking about the color. If you think about modular forms, there's this theory of the modular forms of part integral way, which requires definition, and um, we're not going to talk about it. But then, if you um, if you go through that that picture of, of thinking about uh, modular forms for a representation theory point of view, you're naturally led to a double cover of uh, DL2 or SL2. Um, somehow I can never really quite know which of the uh, various forms that that's what you take. Um, also, you have this, um, there are some, some very basic examples where you, you look at, say, for instance, a um, uh, vein representation. Which is uh, not uh, a representation of the symplectic group, but it's a representation of a spelled color. Uh, the way that representation is a little rich thing that, that comes up in the network has relations to be corresponding to the number of uh, rich area. It's, it's a middle representation that's. I've heard that there's also a minimal representation of the three ball cover of T2, but I don't know what to call that. What to look at? Um, yeah, so actually, these are all double covers, and here I said um, N uh, bigger than one. Uh, what sort of tends to happen in this in this field is that if you're looking at things over over the thumb from something over Q, uh, Q only has two roots in the end, uh, plus or minus one. And so you end up basically thinking about double covers. And uh, if you're thinking about things that come from something global, then you would see uh, quite a single groups of, of larger order if you're thinking about things over uh, number fields that have more roots in the end. But we, we might well, um, and we want to think about this in. Um, as much generality as we sort of can, but that's, that's sometimes sort of uh, a little bit annoying. So I might make some uh, simplifying assumptions uh, So let me just make some sort of assumption. Uh, let's, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I can like, get rid of this. Um, so, so I can simplify things. Uh, let's like assume, for instance, that D is uh, this group scheme is either unramified. Or even is split. So um, I'll I'll tell you what this is. There's, there's two different ways that you can um, define unremified and they're equivalent. So uh, one way to define unremified is that um, 
is that G is the special high button. Is the uh, oh, not special, generic. On a reductive group scheme. Okay. Uh, OF is the ring of interest you see here. For evaluation group, um, that mission group two is that the G is largely split and splits are uh, under. Splits uh, and unramified extension. Yeah, so if, if you want the equivalence between these two definitions, it's a little bit more trivial. Um, I, I asked a math of a question about this once uh, many years ago, and the answer contains a proof. I didn't write the answer. Um, also, if, if, if this sort of generality is a little bit uh, mysterious to you, and uh, for anyone who, who's thought about finding groups of the type, basically the uh, remember groups are the ones first, the cor they cor correspond to the groups of the type. Okay, so um, let's sort of say a little bit about uh, where you might. I might construct these. I'm not going to construct them. Construct these extensions. Um, of these central extensions. So I, I ultimately I'm going to sort of take that at the existence of a bit of a, a black box. Um, what we need to do anything is um that the number of is that that f has n distinct n groups of one in it. Now, um, yeah. So there's there's a there's a classical. Uh, <laughs> There's a classical construction where, where, where G is split. Um, this uh, people involved in this things like uh, Max Mutter. I think it's the same Max Mutter that came on the other one. I think it's not very small, it's not very standard. Steinberg's um yeah lecture notes actually has some formulae that are quite useful in these uh that are the groups. Um and then they construct the the, the, the short exact sequence. Or essentially essentially I can say well this is the algebraic K theory of F. Um who put algebraic K theory in my in my lead theory. Um <laughs> but and then, and then you can push forward this using the Hilbert symbol. So the, the, the Hilbert symbol is a map from K2 of, well, one way to think about the Hilbert symbol is that some map from K2 of F2 to, to mu n, uh, which definitely requires this, this assumption. Uh, and then you can push forward. Which would, I guess, this is a different G. Um, and you get some construction here. And you can even um, do things, uh, you, you can do computation in this space. So that like, there exists explicit code cycles. If you, if you think about like, uh, writing this as uh, Set theoretically a product, and then you have some close side, two close side will give you the multiplication. Um, and you can do computations with it, at least in type AM. Um, uh, 
I've done some computation with the code cycles in, in SC3, for instance, which um, is probably the, the most the most non trivial sort of having to, to sit down and work out and do some computation with the code cycles, computing some pretty good functions for, for SC3. Correct. Yeah, so, um, and then there's, there's a much more general story, which I'll also. A much more general construction. Or even classification. So Berlinski and Deleen have a, a paper where they um they classify central extensions on um of G. By K2, and I'll put an underline in it under it because it's sheet K2 on some big thirsty side, which, um, and, and for each that thing, you actually get a corresponding group, which still actually requires a little bit of work, even once you've got this, uh, this extension, because you might need some page one to vanish. But out of this, you get um you get central extensions. And in this classification, there's there's a few pieces of data in this classification, uh, and how much data it is sort of depends on how um, horrible your group is. The best case is always the, the simple method, semi-simple case, but, but the most important piece of data. Is um, Q, which will go from this is a, a maximum torus, T is a, a maximum torus to um, the Z, and this is should be a vial group and Galois group very. Just think about uh, our group if, uh, if, you're, if your group is split, it's the bar group uh, invariant. We'll drag it full. Uh, and I'll say one thing where this, where this uh, quadratic form really comes up and you see it, like that's um, some sort of general. Nonsense about so let's sort of uh, restrict to the metaphysic torus. So here I've got I uh, one to um you n to some uh, uh, let me just write t till now so it's not that t um because these sorts of t's are hard to write. So here, um, this is not, uh, this is no longer going to be abelian. Is that what's called the metaphysical torus? That's what I'm calling, yeah, just the, yeah. the, the restriction of the yeah. extension to be on. Um, which is not. Which, but it's not it's not appealing in a in a fairly mild way. It, it's a it's um a two-step Heisenberg group the uh, yeah, it's it's a finite finite I mean, it's center has uh finite index bunch of nice things like that. Um but the, I can write down a commutator formula. So there's a there's a commutator. We 
finished. I can write actually going to the bottom. Oh, no, 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 that way. Um, so you, if you just think you, you, you define a commutator at the end of it, and then um, take it a group commutator, it doesn't depend on, on the loop. And, and the, the, the formula. Um, So I only need to say what, what everything is. Um, S and C here are in my thread, you know, um, lambda and U are uh, code characters from you know, C, and B is the associated Olivia form, which controls a uh, uh, a reasonable chunk of the pink area at, at the start. So that's that's um that's the sort of groups that uh, I'm interested in, in thinking about today. So um, we, we can also have a talk about some other assumptions. You might want to um, uh, consider that. So I, I think I'm going to want to say um, that uh, there's a few ways to say this. And to be a, a unit in, in my field. Uh, in, my, in my ring, this is also means basically that n is co prime the residue characteristic. This, this is the same case that, of course, sort of globally happens almost everywhere, and it means that there's a very nice formula for this. Uh, this That you can write down. Um, so there's some other assumptions you might want to do. Certainly, uh, one of them, which uh, is, is that um, G, G flipped over this um, maximal compact. Here, I guess I'm using uh, an unramified assumption. This is a Uh, what does it mean to say that something splits? It means that if I have, so I have um, if I have a, a subgroup H here, let's good thing call this uh, a phi, then um, phi inverse of H should be isomorphic to this uh, product in a, a compatible way. So this is the uh, definition of splitting. This this happens most of the time, but um, I, I found an example due to Gan and Gao where it doesn't happen. It, it, it really annoyed me, and I felt the example was somewhat silly, but it's an extra assumption you need. What other conditions are each here? Uh, H here can be any uh, subgroup of G of F. It's a, and if the, the pre image is now, if you have any labor restriction to, to H of this, of the co cycle generating. But if I take my subgroup H to be G of F, then that would mean that G is split. Yes, that would mean this is the definition of split of H. All of H split. Yeah. So um, I'll also say that um, G will always split. Over a people already suffered. Um, 
And then um, I want to be honest that there's, there's a naughty assumption. So let's actually write let give you the cardinality of the rest of you. So there's an assumption that we don't want to make. Is is that an end device? Is it two end device? Three minus one. So under the the first assumption that that implies end device T minus one. Because I needed my uh, field to have enough root to give me. Um, so there's this assumption which you might see if you actually pick up a paper that's published in my uh, on this topic. Uh, it's because if, well, I, I'm, I'm, uh, what I'm what I'm saying today is you don't require that assumption. Uh, uh, in, in some, some old stuff. It's there because there are some signs for minus one that appear uh, otherwise. And I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with minus, you know, minus one, I guess. So I'm not a, a super mathematician. All right, so let's try to do some, some representation here. So why don't we just start with Tori? Because Tori is supposed to be easy. Um, so I could either construct all the, all the representations or I could take a um, categorical point of view and try and tell you what the category of representation is equivalent to. Um, since I'm going to assume that we know what representations of the reading groups are uh, theory for words, and also that we um, this is not that hard. You can use a it's it's a two dimensional potent group, and, and there's no topological issue to actually deal with. So you can do that as well. I'll tell you what the categories are equivalent to. So let's just uh, do the, the A equals one case, which is the ordinary reductive case, just to warm up. Then um, you have. T, which uh, lives in, uh, inside it, there is C of, of F, which is maximal compact. Oh, I should say what the representation is. Yes. So um, a representation means that the group is acting on the vector space, but um, which which we know, but the in 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 the study of the anagrams, you always assume that represent all representations are what is called smooth. And so if I have a, a group mapping on a, a vector space B, then the, the definition of smooth is that for all um, B in B, the set of G such that uh, G B is equal to B is I remember this polity and chaotic things. Um, you have this wonderful uh, basis of the neighborhood, which is which is consisting of cup groups. Yeah, cup Yes, yeah, so we'll do uh, and Let's work on C. In particular, I mean, the main thing really is uh, what do I have a algebra because of the mechanics. Because the quality of C doesn't doesn't help in. Uh, this is also equivalent, I guess, continuous with the street quality of C. Um, so here I have red T mapping to red of T of O F. Uh, this one, because this is compact, this is very simple. 
Uh, and so you can you can do a block decomposition to tear that gives you the blocks up upstairs. Um, so the restriction. D of O F is the block decomposition. I mean, the only reason this is not a semi simple category is somewhat for a silly reason that non compactness is still community. Um, algebra, I don't know if I should say silly, it's better judgmental. Um, and, and each block is uh, equivalent to C of T log T of O F. Modules. Yeah. Uh, so the group algebra of this lattice. So this T of T of OF is actually a lattice, it's isomorphic to the, the co character lattice of T. So now for um, a like representation, so let's say um, a representation. So let's okay, let's uh, let's fix epsilon from u n into uh, complex numbers, and say our representation. G is epsilon genuine if mu n inside G acts by the scalar epsilon. Um, this is central, so we can just work one epsilon at a time. Uh, and if if we have a representation which is not uh, epsilon genuine for some epsilon, then it will factor through some smaller groups, so we don't really care about it. So now um, uh, these these the irreducible epsilon genuine representations of uh, this group here, um, they're now finite dimensional, they all have the same dimension. If I want to talk about the, the blocks, each block of um, each epsilon genuine. Is now equivalent to uh, um, now it's uh, it's still going to be uh, the group algebra of some lattice, but the lattice is uh, a little bit different. You take a centralizer of inside the the this the torus of of the maximal compact. Modulo this as well. There's something I think a little bit non formal about this, and that's the fact that this uh, group here, which is a priori is just a centralizer, is actually in the Vivian subgroup. So Theorem, depending on how important I want to say this, this is an abelian group. Uh, and so this is a uh, this this quotient here is some finite index subclass of. X star T uh, 
Oh, I guess. Yeah. I guess if um, if T is not split, I should probably replace this by an axle split sub, of course. Let's ignore that for now. Uh, but it also has a, a description in terms of the value form. Uh, this comes from playing around with the um, the commutator and knowing a couple of properties of the So this again is the bilinear form associated with the quadratic form that was used to find the, the central extension. And so then, um, as a result of this, I would, I would propose the following. Um, how do I phrase this? So if alpha is a root, um, let uh, n alpha be n divided by um, uh, the GCB of n and the quadratic form at alpha. Check. Okay, so oh, oh, we're running out of time. Um, so I want to, I want to, uh, So I want to, um, I propose that the proposition is in that, well, proposition in the sense of proposing, let this be uh, the same. Uh, this lives inside lambda, which you can check, and this should be the, uh, the code roots. Code root lattice for G. We should think about this as a as a as a, as a code root and code root lattice for, for, for the, the manifold feature of G. Um, so uh, why would I say that this is a good thing to uh, think about? Um, this is supposed to replace the, the, the lattice and, the, and be the, uh, the substitute of the root system in, in this uh, system. It's, it's still just saying that some of the common products are a little bit um, like a reductive group, but a scale in some way. And the scaling has to be a little bit modified if you. Uh, if you're, you're Q, when your Q takes. Values that are, that are not co prime to n. Uh, you actually see this um, root system if you study common roots of root security. So Lustig wrote this down somewhere in the, in the context of um, uh, quantum Gravinius and um, in his book, you can see the, the same, same construction of the root system here. Just basically to do with what happens when you're dealing with quantum roots of root unity, and you've got so your L is small or your um schema or it has has axis uh with uh with like root things. All right, so now um let's uh let's go and say something about the, the general representation of G because we're out of time. Well not out of time, sorry, we're running low on time. Let's try and say something about representations of things that are not all right. 
So as uh, some evidence of this is a principal thing to think about, let me um let's let's think about uh and since we're uh in the karaoke thing, let's think about the principal form. But you don't see the word principal block when people write about yeah groups. Um so this this what do I mean by principal block is the the, the block containing uh, the trivial representation. Um, you could also realize it as um, uh, sub quotients. Basically, the, the, the category generated by sub quotients of unramified. Critical series. So uh, what does that what does that mean? It actually means uh, in, in this you, you take the, the principal block of the metaplectic torus, uh, you inflate it to the Borel because the, the torus is a quotient of the Borel, and then you do a parabolic induction to um, well actually then you induct to G. So that's that's what an unverified principle series is. I e d g of sigma sigma yeah, um, principle block. Sigma. Um, and when you have a a um. When you have a category, um, one way to, of course, uh, work out what this category looks like is to take a projective generator and try to work out the author's number. Um, so you could write down a projective generator. Yes, like basically every block. Assuming you know how to work, and assuming you know what super custom rule went, uh, right down a super custom rule one, which is, of course, um, a question. Uh, but it's all right, that's not so hard. Then you can always write down a projective generator to these things. Um, there's a uh, sort of more classical, maybe less generalizable, uh, but easy, maybe easier to compute with way, which is to write that this is called the equivalent to um, uh, let me say modules over some algebra, which I'll call um, H epsilon of G mod I mod I. Then let me try to tell you what this, this algorithm is. So you can always define um, you can always define an algebra to work do your representation do your work for you. Um, this is the metaphor if you will already take the algebra. So Set of functions from G to I uh, to C such that um, there are a few conditions uh, F of zeta G is equal to zeta uh, E epsilon and zeta F G or theta in root unity. Um, what else? Uh, and then there's these conditions f of i1, e i2 is equal to f of g, or i1, i2 is in i, and i here is going to be a few more subgroup. Um, the way, uh, in this case, you can take uh, the group over, over, over F, it maps to the group over the residue field, KF, and inside of here you have um, the Borel over the residue field, and here is the Dorothy subgroup as this, um, this sub, sub here. 
Okay, so you know, Ivahori doesn't involve the mu and the O. So it's just the normal Ivahori. No, I'm just going to put it a little bit more. Let me split C. So let me um, write down the presentation for this. So let's um, let's let's just the you. So uh, I'll say that whenever you have a um, so if you if you didn't have this if you didn't have this better funny thing this would be the usual you are get out of the um, and every uh, coset would support a function. Here, not every double process supports a function because there's, there's some, some extra condition that, that, that um, you try to write down uh, something that's by a journey and then it will uh, conflict with this. this. So, presentation is as follows. So, T, I have T, U. It's T lambda plus mu, or oh, it's generated by a bunch of things. I think the generators will be obvious. I'll write down the relations. <laughs> so this this minus is now the same lattice that I had over, over here. Um, so it's, it's generators, let's say. Uh, so T lambda and so T S. So the, the lambda are in the are in the lattice, and S are in the, the finite boundary. Uh, so if S alpha lambda equals lambda, then T S T um lambda. Oh, uh, S should be or whatever. And T S alpha T lambda is equal to one. Tell me table they can use, of course, that's not the interesting one. If um lambda in uh lambda dominant and alpha lambda equals n alpha, then you get some relation which um yeah, I don't know where I'll put it down. Um, these uh, extra two cross mutations are sort of uh, actually the, the hardest thing to uh, work out. Then this I'm not going to say that that it's it's important to know what these relations are. And then you have um, the, the T, S is, so all these are S alpha. They, they generate the finite. Okay, And so, uh, since I am um, out of time, I'll just sort of say that this is basically the Bernstein presentation of the um, of the Alpine paper. It's not exactly the Bernstein presentation; it's, it's normally written, but it's not it's not too hard to get from from this presentation to the Bernstein presentation. And this presentation is sort of not 
So they're very going to have to come up with just by uh, qualifying the uh, these functions, which is every one of these generators is the of about double percent. And so this actually tells you that the the, the second algebra for G only depends on this is that data once you reach out generators. And so this is really telling you that um, if you want to think about things in terms of what a language school group is for an electric group, this is a, a starting point that you should be looking at this uh, this root data for all well they're taking. Um, since we're out of time, I'll, I'll just stop there and 